Welcome back to the Spring to Life podcast. My name is Caitlin and I'm your host. I'm also a holistic hormone health coach, fertility awareness educator, and Pilates instructor. I created the Spring to Life method in 2020 to guide women to embrace their natural cycles and live cyclically uh, in accordance with their hormones, the way we were meant to be. And this podcast is about helping you to do that, guiding you to do that, especially with stories from other women. And I'm really excited today to be joined by Steph Weber. Uh, We actually connected a couple years ago, and she was a coach of mine. She really helped me in my business. And now she's on to a new endeavor, which I'm really excited to discuss today. Uh, So Steph, maybe you can tell the audience a little bit about you and what your brand is. Uh, Well, Caitlin, first of all, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. And Love all the things that you're doing and the community that you've created. It's so important. So if you're here and listening to this podcast, keep listening. Be sure you hit subscribe because Caitlin is definitely one to follow and just like such a wealth of knowledge and also such an inspiration to everything that she's doing and teaching and all the things. So thanks for having me. Um, So my name is Steph Weber. I, where do I start? I I get asked this question now and I'm like, oh, all right, let me, let me give you the short version of a long story. Um, I've been in branding and marketing now for about a decade. So my career started in the fashion industry. I worked in that industry from the time that I was 17 until the time that I was 27. Um, In that industry, I had a lot of different learning opportunities. And it's also where my own brand started. So the boutique I was working for at the time I was working with influencers. This was around 2016. And I was like, well, I can do influencer marketing. So I can talk about what I'm wearing, where I'm traveling, the makeup I'm using, like whatever, all the things. So I created Trendy and Indie. Um, That was awesome for a couple of years. I had hundreds of different brand partnerships. And throughout that entire journey, really learned that my bigger mission and purpose was in helping entrepreneurs and small businesses understand their brand. I would go into these small businesses and say, well, tell me like, what makes you unique? Why do people come here? Why do they choose you over the boutique down the street or the restaurant down the street or whatever? And in those conversations, I realized so many entrepreneurs didn't understand branding. They thought branding and thought fonts, logos, and colors. And that is where my pivot into the Weber Co. really happened. So I was sitting in New York Fashion Week in 2018, realized that influencer marketing was really cool, but wasn't getting me what I was looking for and also what I felt like my like my bigger purpose was. So created the Weber Co. to be able to serve small businesses and entrepreneurs, was able to coach and or support through our agency, hundreds of different entrepreneurs from various different spaces, from the health and wellness space to the online coaching world, various different brick and mortars, lots of really cool businesses. Um, In that, I kept hearing mentors of mine say, you need a niche, you need a niche, you need a niche. And I was like, okay, okay, I I get it, I get it, but I'm not there yet. Um, And really my niche at the time was helping entrepreneurs understand that branding needed to come before marketing and Mm -hmm. how branding and marketing support one another. So I kind of positioned myself and positioned the Weber Co. in that um, and, and grew that company tremendously, which was really great. Um, until I felt another shift in my heart and somewhere along the way found the industry that I felt like, oh, this is the niche that I was intended to to focus on. So um, in 2023, stepping into the short-term rental space is something that my husband and I have wanted to do for a period of time. So it's been something that I, I have a board here from, I think that this had to have been like September of 2022 and on, or maybe it was, yeah, September of 2022. That's crazy. Time really does fly. We're talking about that. (laughs) Um, And it literally says on here to have an Airbnb that is profitable and branded beautifully. Like that's the exact words on this intention board that I have in my office from September 2022. (laughs) And that's like, we've had it. I've had that vision for years now. And so in 2023, we kind of said, you know what? we're eight months pregnant, like, let's do it. (laughs) Um, And it was, it's been an absolute roller coaster and wild journey. But yes, so the Weber Co. uh, now largely focuses on supporting short-term rental owners from a branding design and marketing perspective. 
I do still do the work that I was doing with you, Caitlin, on Mm -hmm. a very individual level and more consulting. So I have um, a client right now that I'm working with who owns a boutique, an online boutique. So I, you know, I still, I still do that work. I haven't fully stepped away from it. Um, I think branding and marketing just like run in my veins. And so it's just going to be part of what I do forever. But stepping into the world of short-term rentals, I quickly realized that there are like no one knows how to market their properties. And everybody is like, I'll put my property on Airbnb and Verbo and booking.com or whatever platforms you're on. And I'll let them do the work. <laughs> and that's mm-hmm. totally fine. But if you're a short-term rental owner who has a goal to build your portfolio and to have multiple properties, marketing is important for you. And having mm-hmm. control of that is important for you. Because at any point in time, Airbnb could decide that they don't want to show your listing to anybody for whatever reason. And then what mm-hmm. do you have? Um, yeah. And this is, how, this is how I've kind of always led my business too. Like, you know, even if you're using social media for marketing your business, again, you don't own social media. So really important to make sure you have various different marketing mediums um, mm-hmm. and strategies that you're using. So all that being said, we're now in the short-term rental industry. That's what the Weber Co. does. We also created Hosted by the Webers, which is our short-term rental co-hosting brand. So we co-host on 14 different listings here in the Indianapolis area. And then we're also building cabins on the Cumberland. So that is going to be nine cabins down in Jamestown, Kentucky. They're on the river, riverfront properties, private boat ramp out onto the river. It is beautiful and so serene and super cool. And everything that we're doing right now, I've never felt more like fear with faith, with (laughs) excitement all at the same time um, as I am in this state of life right now. So this is, I mean, all of this has unraveled. I decided to make this pivot. We had our little guy in May of 2023. We had Noah in May of 2023. We also bought our first short-term rental that month. We also started hosted by the Webers that month. So literally since May of 2023, that this is all the things I just listed are what we've done. I didn't pivot the Weber Co. until August. I, mm-hmm. I remember a friend asking me in early June, so what's next for the Weber Co.? And I was like, I don't know right now. I don't have a full <laughs> answer for you. Like, I don't know. Um, but there's something in this short-term rental industry, and I don't know what it is, but I'm going to have to trust it and just like see what happens. So. I would definitely tell you that I am very much still in the middle of a, kind of in the middle of a pivot. I mean, I've made the pivot, but we're still Mm -hmm. still very much figuring things out. And that such is the journey of entrepreneurship. That's, it's been so cool to see this evolution of your brand and your business and the things that you're doing, because I think my time with you ended just a little bit before you started to make these pivots. And I think it was something that like, it wasn't necessarily unexpected from you, but it was in a way because you had the Weber Co and you had this successful branding and marketing company. Uh, But looking back when, you know, I would be on a call with you, with the group, when you are leading us and like setting our goals, I think you are always, this was always a part of your vision. This was always something that you spoke about wanting uh, so do you think that there's some power in like speaking things into existence and you have a vision board, like you manifested this? Oh my gosh, Caitlin, this is like what has unraveled in the last year is like the biggest testament of <laughs> manifestation possible, right? So in April last year, we joined we joined a program called BNB Investor Academy with Michael Elefante. He's kind of a short-term rental. I'm going to say influencer, but he's a mentor. He's a coach in the space. Um, And we joined his program and said, great, like teach us how to do this. Teach us your ways, blah, 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 all the things. In April, I started the Hosted by the Webbers account. And if you scroll back, I've not posted very much on this account, so it's not going to take you long to scroll. But if you scroll back, there's a post I shared in April. And I shared our our goals with the business. Okay, it's literally like this title slide is our vision. And then I have various different like pieces of what we want to do with co-hosting the different properties that we wanted to own. The very last slide is titled The Big Dream. And The Big Dream talks about having uh, a piece of land somewhere near water or the mountains with A-frames with like multiple units and this really serene space that can host retreats and events and families. And like it's a place where people come year after year. 
Kevin's on the Cumberland opportunity unfolded itself and presented itself to us in July. So within literally two months of sharing, I, you know, when I wrote that, I was like, this is really far off in the future. Like this is 10 years from now. This is mm-hmm. like not overnight. And it it's insane, actually insane. So it's definitely felt, you know, I think that this is what's been interesting about my journey of entrepreneurship and interesting that we're having a conversation in this time. But when I've made decisions in my business to pivot, I experienced this like insane, crazy momentum. And that's just like so much full alignment. And then I like retract and I'm like, who am I? And what, who am I, what am I doing in this space? And like, who am I to think that I can do all these things? And then there's the fear and there's the financial pressure and the stress and like all these different things. Right. So now I'm in this season of like, ah, okay, like I'm ready for the next woo, like push, you know? Uh-huh. Um, but I think that that's like, something that as entrepreneurs and just as people in general, we like we experience, we are challenged by, right? Like we, mm-hmm. we step into this place of alignment and we're, we're like, we don't know. We just, we're just going for it. That's how I felt when we entered the short-term rental space. I was like, I don't know, but I've never felt more like this is what I'm supposed to do than I do right now. And I think maybe part of that has been all of the experiences I've had as a business owner over the years. I think part of that is leaning way more into like full faith, full trust versus the fear, um, because it is easy to let the fear take over. And I definitely still have seasons where I'm doing that. So I think it's just another like reminder that on the journey of building something, you're always going to have this like voice that's going, right, can you really do that? Are you sure? Like, what are you doing? And, and like trying to check you. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I just, I have to like recenter and realign and remind myself what I'm doing and continue to just say like full faith, full trust. Cause this season it's like, Ooh, what's happening. But that's, that's part of it. Yeah. I can only imagine like the, I mean, so many, like you said, so many doors and so many opportunities have opened up since you have embarked on this endeavor. I'm what I'm curious if there were some signs or you were getting some feelings before you decided to go all in with hosted by the Webers where you were like, I feel like it's time to make a pivot or was it just a natural progression of things? Cause I think sometimes we can get a little stuck. We're like, well, I built this thing and this is what I do. So, I mean, it wouldn't make sense for me to pivot, but you did something completely different, although it does intertwine with your branding and marketing. Yeah. Um, that's a great question. And I would say, I, I didn't necessarily intend to pivot the Weber Co to focus just on the short term rental industry. I knew, I knew in September of 2022 that the Weber Co was going to experience a shift, and I couldn't explain it at that time, and I didn't know what it was going to look like, but I knew that there there was going to be a change. Uh, we in 2022 we had stepped, we were still running Brands Captivate Academy, which was the program that you were in. And then we also had opened our agency that year. And the agency was so awesome. And so was obviously the academy and everything that we were doing in that. But when we got to that fall of 2022, I started feeling like something's going to change. And like, we're going to have to make a pivot here. And I don't know what that pivot's going to look like, but Mm -hmm. something is radically going to shift. And I can't really put my finger on it even still of what that was. I don't know if for me, I mean, I'm sure for me, I was definitely feeling a little bit of burnout. I was also feeling like I'm ready for the next challenge or the next thing. Um, And I mean, you were with, you were with me, Caitlin, when we had a huge team, the pressure of paying five team members a salary and knowing that you are their income and their livelihood started to feel really heavy for me and like a lot. Um, And in that, I also know that there were a lot of different learning lessons and a lot of different areas where I wasn't always the best leader and I needed to refine those skills. So I got to a point with the Weber Co where I was like, unless I have a team, I don't think I can continue to build this in the way I want to build it. And the agency started to become, well, do you do social media marketing or do you not? And I was like, I, yes, we do, but I don't, I'm not going to run your social media accounts. I don't want, I don't want that. And even if I passed it off to a team member, like that was going to fall on me. So mm-hmm. I was just like, ah, oh, okay, what is it? What do I want? What do I want? And I think I just kept like saying, I know there's going to be a pivot and I don't know what it is and I have to trust it. And there's going to be a pivot. And when you're just kind of open to, when you can say, 
I don't know, but I trust whatever's next. I think that's where you get to a place where you start to see doors open and you get to decide, yeah, I'm going to follow this and I'm going to go after it or no, I'm not. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I can't tell you that there was one specific sign. I think that there was just more of a like gut feeling, but then yeah. we start, once I really, really dove into the short-term rental industry, that's when I said, okay, the skill set that I have. It's so interesting because in the short-term rental industry, I feel like I'm about two years ahead of where the industry is from a marketing perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I got to kind of backtrack a little to bring everybody up to speed in that industry. But that's where also when you can find those areas where you have something unique to offer, that's when there's a lot of growth and momentum for everybody involved. So Mm -hmm. that that was the opportunity that I saw there. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know what this is going to look like, but I... I did unfortunately let go of all of my team members, which is like never fun. And again, things that people don't talk about in entrepreneurship. Um, I love all of my team members. I still have, I still connect with them, still talk to them. But um, I, I had to do that, and there was so there were so many times that I was like running my business and putting my family on the back burner, or my role in the business on the back burner, or my pay on the back burner. And I was mm-hmm. like, not why I started this business, and I cannot do this. To my family and I can't do this to me as a business owner. It just doesn't make any sense. So um, yeah, that's and now and now we pivoted. So we're still here. <laughs> I think it's so exciting, and you know, like I said, I think it makes sense. You know, bringing your branding and your marketing into the short term rental business. But when I first saw you posting about it, I was kind of like, wow, I never really even thought like people just have Airbnbs. It's on Airbnb. But if you really want it to be a business, you have to take some ownership in it. So I think, yeah, you are ahead of the curve and you're kind of like setting a bar for people that like really want that to be a part of their entrepreneurial portfolio or, you know, something that they really grow. You have to have something that sets you apart. For sure. And I think that that's the interesting thing, right? Like, so no one guests don't say, oh, we booked a short-term rental. They say, oh, we booked an Airbnb. We're staying Mm -hmm. at Airbnb. We're going to an Airbnb, right? That's what you say. Well, Airbnb is the brand. Airbnb, Mm -hmm. I mean, well, Airbnb is is a platform, right? But it's Mm -hmm. the brand. So Mm -hmm. obviously they've done a great job with, you know, who they are, what they do, who they Mm -hmm. serve, what they're trying to cultivate. But I think that that's an important thing for hosts to remember. Airbnb owns Airbnb. They mm-hmm. don't own your home. You own your home and you own yeah. your experience. And I that's actually one of the most common things that I hear from guests when I talk about this online. Um, I hear guests say, who, who don't have any ownership, but they say, I don't book on Airbnb anymore because it's so inconsistent. And I don't know what I'm going to get from one thing to the next to the next, right? And that's mm-hmm. a huge problem. So when I'm working with a short-term rental owner that has four plus properties, I'm like, you have a huge opportunity to really build a brand and build a business that your guests can come back to year after year because you're building something with a consistent experience. But if you're not marketing Mm -hmm. that and you're just leaving it up to chance and letting Airbnb or Verbo dictate, they could change something tomorrow and you have zero control over that. But if you Mm -hmm. have four homes and you are consistently booked, Imagine the number of guest emails that you could collect or imagine the number of followers that you could gain just by having some kind of marketing strategy in place. It's very interesting. Yeah, Yeah, I think what you're doing is so smart because I mean, I spent some time traveling um, before I moved to Montana and I was staying in Airbnbs and it's kind of 50-50. Like some of them were great experiences and some of them were horrible experiences. And then you have to deal with either uh, an owner that doesn't really care because they are, they have, you know, maybe uh, 20 properties that they're just trying to bank on or Airbnb's customer service doesn't really want. It was just, it was very difficult. So I, I've seen that you are having your hosts have their own websites to like direct book. Am I correct? Yeah. 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 Most, most short-term rental owners that I'm working with and supporting through the Weber Co. So from a branding mm-hmm. design and marketing perspective, most of those hosts, yes, they are on Airbnb. And I saw somebody post about this in one of the Facebook groups I'm in um, probably a few days ago. 
um, about direct bookings and direct bookings are great. Like they're super important. There's definitely a level of legwork that's involved in order to get people to your site. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of, one of my followers said, I wish that I knew where to go to book direct because I don't. And it's like, yeah, I'm, I mean, unless you go and you do a Google search and they've got mm-hmm. good SEO on their website, or you're going on Instagram or TikTok to mm-hmm. try to search that area, Maybe difficult for you to find direct booking sites. I'm like, this is a problem we should solve. But <laughs> uh, one thing at a time. Um, but yeah, most of the hosts that I'm working with are listed. They do have direct booking and they are also on Airbnb and and Verbo, which mm-hmm. is which is fine. But again, like to your point of what you've experienced, there are some hosts that are like, this is my hobby and we have this house. And so I listed it on Airbnb and they don't know how to run it. Like the operation mm-hmm. side is a challenge. They're not running it as a business. They're running it as a hobby. And I mean, in my, even from my opinion, as a guest from the guest side of things, it's like, I don't want to stay in somebody's house that's running this as a hobby. Like how much do they care? Do they? I don't yeah. know. The other side of it too is the property management side, right? There are some very large property management companies out there and you can you know, very clearly see that when it's a larger property management company, the reviews are often about bad communication, couldn't Mm -hmm. get a hold of the host, uh, property wasn't taken care of X, Y, Z. So from a guest perspective, like there's education that has to happen, right? Like, so one of the things that I'm trying to do is educate guests. Like when you are going to book a property, Make sure that the host has great communication. Make sure that it's an actual person. I probably Mm -hmm. wouldn't work with a super large property management company because I don't know, even Mm -hmm. though there's some level of like clout behind some of these, Mm -hmm. go and look at their reviews. Their reviews speak for themselves, but Mm -hmm. that's a whole nother tangent we get on. (laughs) Well, as you're speaking about this, I'm thinking, because I know... There's a lot of controversy in the short term rental space, especially I think because of what Airbnb has built, like in some cities, in some areas, it's become a little bit of a conflict, like if it's a residential area and how Airbnb runs things. But I'm kind of seeing like a plus side to the way that you're doing things where it's almost like the next generation of bed and breakfast where you have like this kind of branded space and it is homey and you're booking directly with the hosts and they're taking care of you, even though they're not, you know, in that space with you, instead of it being just kind of this cash cow and Airbnb is taking their big cut of the money as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a lot of controversy in the space and I will, I will be the first to tell you, I am not uh, 100% educated on every piece of it. Um, I know that there's a lot of conversation around short-term rentals impacting low income housing, there's definitely arguments and points to be seen on both sides of that. From the perspective of what we're trying to do here in Indianapolis, Indianapolis is actually an unregulated market. And so what that means is that anybody could buy an Airbnb or anybody could buy a home here in Indianapolis and decide to list it on Airbnb. And if it's not in a neighborhood and you don't have to go through an HOA, which is how a lot of the neighborhoods, obviously downtown Indianapolis, they're not, they don't have HOAs. So yeah, I mean, we have our our home that we own in Indy. Um, We actually met both neighbors. We went up to their door. We knocked on the door. We introduced ourselves. Okay, let's be real. My husband did all of this. I did (laughs) side of it. I'm not as like bubbly and outgoing as he is. Um, So I was like, can you please do this? But he went up, he knocked on the door. He introduced himself to both neighbors. He was like, this is who I am. We want to let you know. We just purchased this property next door. We do want to let you know that it is going to be a short-term rental. One neighbor was like, cool, we don't care. And we exchanged phone numbers with them. And she literally texted us two weeks ago. We had to get a new oven. And she was like, hey, are you guys moving out? Because um, there are people taking an oven out of your (laughs) door. And I just want to make sure that everything's okay. And I was like, that's so cool. She's lived in that house, in in the house that's next door to this Mm -hmm. for um, 20 something years, 30 something Mm -hmm. years. Our neighbor on the other side was like, yeah, I mean, I'm like not too excited about the fact that this is going to be a short term rental, right? He was like, mm-hmm. not super stoked about it. He's lived in this house since like 1990 or something. Um, and so yeah, like it do, do short term rentals impact the neighborhood? Yeah. Are there pros and cons? 100%. Mm-hmm. Do I think that you have a responsibility as a host and as a business owner to make sure that you know your neighbors and make sure that they have your number in case that there's something crazy happen? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I do. But again, like this is where it comes back to host responsibility, right? If you've got guests that are throwing a party, most of us have cameras on our properties to make sure that, you know, one, everything is like safe and secure. That's just like an important thing. But two, we want to make sure that like guests are, 
if they're throwing a party in our backyard, we can see that, right? By security cameras, I'm talking about outdoor cameras. Do not mm-hmm. put inside your shorts. <laughs> I leave it illegal. Don't do it. And Airbnb now also just came out and said that they're, re- they're requiring like disclosing of location of the cameras, like all the things, right? Mm-hmm. And they can't be in private spaces. Okay, do everything ethically, right? Like do everything ethically. But all that being said, um, I definitely think that as a host, it's important to make sure that you are, um, you understand both sides of, you know, where, wherever you're located um, and be a part of the community conversations and go to the, go to those community conversations. I obviously see the benefit of how much uh, travel short-term rentals actually do bring to a city. So Indianapolis, like I mentioned, it is an unregulated market. I do actually think that we would benefit from some regulations. It would require mm-hmm. hosts to have a permit. It would require hosts potentially to have their homes inspected for safety. Like, mm-hmm. again, make sure that you're creating a space that's safe for guests, that is safe for the neighborhood, and that like everybody is, is good to go, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I do think that we would benefit from that. Um, but also, we just were featured on Channel 6, which is a news station here in Indy, uh, for one of the themed homes that we designed through the Weber Co. here. And the whole story, the whole angle of the story was the number of huge events that are coming to our city this year, just huge. Mm. And our Convention and Visitors Bureau was interviewed for this. So when our Convention and Visitors Bureau goes to pitch Indianapolis for some of these large events, conventions, whatever it is, one of the things that these these companies are considering is where are people going to stay? How are you going mm. to help people? Because not everyone wants to stay in a hotel, and our hotel certainly couldn't host the number of people that are going to come to the city. So the mm. fact that we are so short-term rental friendly is an important piece, and that brings, obviously, money to the city. That brings jobs to the city, mm-hmm. um, and whether we like it or not, <laughs> um, we we have to have like money to be able to do things, right? Like, this mm-hmm. is just what it is. So um, I I see it as a as a huge benefit provided that the hosts are doing their side of things to make sure that they are hosting responsibly um, and renting responsibly. Rent responsibly is another great resource if you're curious to know more about this that you can go and check out and learn more about um, their various different organizations in your in your local area. But yeah, yeah, lots to yeah. discuss on that side of things too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, it sounds like you guys are really paving the way, especially in your area for kind of setting the bar of the way things are done. (laughs) Yes, definitely doing our best. I mean, our goal for what we're doing with Hosted by the Webers, our goal definitely is to provide great guest experiences, to leverage Hoosier hospitality. So if you've ever, if you've never been to Indianapolis, maybe you haven't heard of this, but I -hmm. I often talk to people who are like, yeah, we've heard of Hoosier hospitality. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's true, right? We're a very warm, friendly, welcoming city. And that's definitely what we try to create for guests, right? Every house Mm -hmm. that we co-host on has a coffee bar that is fully stocked. So when you come, you will have coffee and mm-hmm. some of the houses have drip coffee and some of them have Keurigs and all, and so on and so forth. But fully mm-hmm. stocked coffee bars are, are a necessity. And it's a very small thing, but it's an important mm-hmm. thing, right? We're also huge on guest communication. So when a guest is having trouble with a lock, we are like almost immediately there to answer it. So mm-hmm. I, and like, I've had to shift my lifestyle a little bit and make sure that I'm <laughs> Well, usually around four o'clock every day for check-in. Uh-huh. Um, but we also are, are expanding our team there to be able to help support and, and take on those responsibilities. But certainly important to make sure that, again, it just like comes back to what are you building and you're building a business that people are mm-hmm. paying for. So like be mindful that you're trying to provide a great service and we are in the hospitality industry. And I think sometimes mm-hmm. those- some hosts can forget that. Well, there are many, many, many amazing, great hosts out there. So just read reviews. <laughs> I love it. And you mentioned your team. And uh, I know your husband is a big part of your team. And up until like before hosted by the Webers, it was Steph and, you know, the Weber Co. What has it been like bringing your husband on as a part of this entrepreneurial journey? <laughs> Great question, Caitlin. And was he excited about it? Was he ready? Yeah, right. No, Colin would uh, Colin would be totally cool if we both worked like very stable, secure, nine to five. And that's fine. Like that, you guys, he, that is him. That is Colin. He is an engineer. He has a nine to five job. He loves that. He appreciates that he gets to go into an office. Like he's cool with that. Although the other day he did mention, he was like, 
Yeah, at work, they were talking about how people, he just started a new job. So he was like, how people move from what I'm doing into a fully remote role. He's like, that's like, that's what I see long term. That's what I want to do. And so that is even a shift for him in this last year of us working together. I think he's, he's starting to see, especially with two kids, the need Mm -hmm. for flexibility to do what we need to do. And as long as the work gets done, who cares when it gets done? And Mm -hmm. that's kind of how, that's how I've sort of run my businesses as well. But um, he, he, we've been installing the cabins and let me just tell you, when you are installing furniture in multiple cabins, it is, it's a lot of work. It's very tedious. And he said, I enjoy it. And so my brain is spinning and I'm like, wait a minute, I thought we could do something with this. And he's like, stop. He, <laughs> that he has insurance that he's got the 401k, right? Like it's not, mm-hmm. you don't have any of that. So you've got to get creative and do things a little bit differently or have, have a partner who it provides the insurance in, in some way mm-hmm. with their job. Right. Um, but I think all that being said, uh, Colin, has always been the biggest supporter of anything I've ever wanted to do. So when we decided that I was going to make the leap into full time with the Weber Co. back in 2020, when the world felt broken and I was newly pregnant, he was like, yeah, like, go for it. I trust you. I I get what you're trying to do. I see this for you. And I said, great, I'm going to do it then. (laughs) Um, And he's always been that way. So when I said, you know, I want to do this. And he, he knew that like, this was going to be part of our long-term generational wealth and investment plan. Mm -hmm. Um, we learned about co-hosting and so we Mm -hmm. were like, Oh, well let's do co-hosting so that we can continue to build our own portfolio. We can help other hosts. We can really figure out our footing with this. And it's led to so many other opportunities already. So he can see that, um, there have been a lot of late nights. I feel like when I talk about this, I'm, I start to paint the picture of like how cool it is. Then I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, keep in mind, uh, for the first, I would say like six months of us running hosted by the Webers. So from May of 2023 to like the end of the year, there were many times where Colin would be downtown at like have to go downtown after work and or after my children went to bed, which was at eight mm-hmm. o'clock at night. So he would then go downtown and work from like eight to midnight, trying to get houses set up, install locks, do whatever they needed to have done on them, et cetera. Um, so it's not, it's not glamorous. It has not mm-hmm. been pretty. And we have had to get really grounded about why we're doing this and why mm-hmm. we've chosen this path. And anytime you're building anything, like anytime that you see anybody post online and they're like, I now make $20,000 in my sleep. Well, they didn't start there. Let me tell you that. (laughs) They started with like very um, grassroots, boots on the ground, figuring it out, and a lot Mm -hmm. of late nights and a lot of long days, right? Mm -hmm. Um, This is how this is like sometimes this can be how businesses are built. Maybe I shouldn't put this umbrella on on everybody because you get to decide how you want to run your business. For me, I dive in and I go head first and I'm willing to put in 14 hour days in order for me to get further, faster, but that's how I operate. It's not how everybody operates and that's okay. Um, For us, our long-term vision is to be able to travel with our kiddos, preferably Mm -hmm. in a camper around the States for at least a year. And I don't know where we'll go after that, but I, I have always been very open to what does life look like outside of this little suburban bubble of we go to work, the kids go to school, then they go to their after school activities. Pretty soon they're off to college. Like, okay, but what if it doesn't have to be that way? What if it looks different? What if it looks like traveling more? What if it looks like living in a camper? What if it looks like homeschooling for a period of time? What if it looks like figuring out where we want to live and not and being okay to not have all the answers? Mm-hmm. And I'm open to that. And Colin has become more and more on board with it. We both definitely decided we love Indy, but we're not staying here long term. This is not where mm-hmm. we want to be forever. So what does that look like for us? And we don't know. We don't know where we necessarily want to land other than somewhere in the mountains. And Colin would tell you somewhere with snow, I would go back to Phoenix in a heartbeat. (laughs) But we'll see. I love that, like the outside of the box thinking, because I think that, I mean, up until now, I had a pretty unconventional start to my career dancing ballet and moving around the country. And I just always, it was like, okay, this is what I'm doing now. And we'll see what happens next and where it leads you. And it just, the choices you make open up the new doors and those new opportunities. And I think if you are following your gut, which it, we know that you have followed your gut in the way that you have built your business, I think it it takes you where you're supposed to be and gives you the yeah. experiences you need. 
Yes, it totally does. And I think that we're, we're, what's cool about the world that I think that we live in now, I know that there's a lot of, there's a lot of craziness, but there's, there are some mm-hmm. cool things, right? And I think <laughs> families are more and more open to what does it look like for us to spend more time together? What does it look like for us to be outside? What does it look mm-hmm. like for us to not raise our kids in the exact same way we were raised? And that's mm-hmm. kind of where Colin and I are are at. Not that there's anything wrong with how we were raised. Like I'm very thankful for everything that I got to experience from show choir and dance and that side of things. But I also am like, I want maybe I want something different for the boys. And I think that mm-hmm. they'll appreciate that gift as well to not feel like they have to be, you know, I, I look back and I'm like, what is school teaching us? It's like we sit at a desk for seven hours and we rotate classes and we learn mm-hmm. a bunch of information and then what do we do with all of that information like what have we actually been taught so Mm -hmm. everybody has a difference in opinion on this right but this is just kind of me talking talking through this and kind of the reason behind why we're doing what we're doing but Mm -hmm. uh, yeah I think one thing that has helped Colin and I in building this business is that we get more and more on the same page every day about why Mm -hmm. and what we're doing and what we're building it's definitely been a learning curve to be business partners parents, and also husband and wife. Mm -hmm. Um, And those are three very different roles. And sometimes it's, it can be, I am like super business oriented. So it can be difficult for me to take off my business hat and be like, all right, wife. Okay. Yes. (laughs) Right. Um, And from a parent perspective, I mean, we did all of this when we had a newborn and a toddler. And so that's all very new and like learning too. I think the Colin and I would attribute our partnership working really well because we are partners. We Mm -hmm. are partners and we work through things together and we are committed to that. Even if we have a difference of opinion, even if we have a disagreement and we do, we have our disagreements, we snap at each other, we do all the things, but we can walk away and then come back and say, sorry, Here's what's going on for me. It's not necessarily about you. It's the stress I'm feeling or it's the the situation that happened or whatever it is, right? Because it's often not the other person. And I think that we've just had to, have, had to get really good about doing that. We've had to get really good about trying to create boundaries where we can while also like navigating so much new in our lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. So you and Colin have been together since high school, right? So you've got a long history of relationship. Um, I haven't been with Jordan quite that long, but I think that you get that, but there's something about that length of a relationship that you get that maturity and you, you can have a conflict and then you're able to come back around and talk about it. And you, I think that, do you think that having that history has allowed you to be able to build this business together at this point in your yeah. life? Yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, even when Colin and I, yes, we we are we are high school sweethearts. So we we've stayed together through um, going to separate colleges for four years. I studied abroad for three months. I then interned in New York City for two months. Like we've had a lot of time apart, and mm-hmm. in that we've had time to be individuals. Like you mm-hmm. have to remember that no matter what kind of relationship you're in, you're also a human, like a human yourself first, right? Like you are a person with your own personal needs and wants and desires. And your partner is maybe not always going to want those same things, right? Colin Mm -hmm. really doesn't have a desire to be a full-time entrepreneur unless it really makes a lot of financial sense. And it's going to have to like really make a lot of sense. And Mm -hmm. right now, it definitely does not for us, for him Mm -hmm. him to take that leap. At some point, could it? Sure, maybe. Um, But, you know, if Colin wants to continue to have his engineering career, I fully support that. And I think mm-hmm. that's what you have to, like, that's been something huge for us. And I think that that's what I would tell anyone who's listening to this, thinking about starting a business with their partner and or in a business with their partner, you're going to want different things. That has to be okay. Somewhere it has to merge though. Like somewhere it will merge and somewhere it overlaps. So for Colin and I, that's like the lifestyle that we want to live with the boys. Well, how does that work and how do we get there? And Colin's like, well, if I can work remotely, that helps us. And I'm like, cool, mm-hmm. if I can just keep building businesses, that that helps me get what I want, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to come together on what do you both want, what's important for you to feel and to have, and then how does it merge and how do you get there together? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a partnership. It is, totally it's a partnership. is. It's a partnership. And there's give and take and all the things. So... 
I, my mind keeps going back to the fact that you had your second baby and you started this business in the same month. So what was that like? What, I mean, it had to be somewhat stressful, I would imagine, but I, I also wonder if you know what your human design type, I feel like you must be a generator or manifesting generator just to be able to work these 14 hour days and just keep your boots on the ground. So I'm a manifester. It's my okay. Design type. So this is people, I don't know a lot about it, Caitlin, but I mean, a lot of people have said like, this is why you're able to have quick momentum and like do mm-hmm. things fast because mm-hmm. you're and when you're like, this is my vision and you step into full alignment, you just like go for it and it happens for you. Mm-hmm. So again, I don't, I don't know a whole lot, but that's kind of what I've been told. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. 10 out of 10 don't recommend starting a business and having <laughs> it the same month. It was incredibly <laughs> stressful and it wasn't, not only was it stressful from the fact of like starting a business. That that wasn't even the stressful part. I think the stressful part was that month. We entered the month of May. I had one team member still remaining with me at the time. The Weber Co. hadn't experienced its pivot. Our income for the month of May was looking super bleak, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to pay myself. I knew we were also trying to purchase a home, and I just remember thinking, please don't ask for my P&Ls. Please don't ask for my P&Ls. Like, I don't want to show you my mm-hmm. profit statements. Mm-hmm. I don't want to show them to you. Don't ask for them. <laughs> um, I just like remember thinking that. Mm-hmm. And from a business perspective, I think that that can feel like, where did I fail or where did I go wrong? And I mm-hmm. just look at really anything like that. I think that I look at anytime I've failed or feel like I failed, I can go, okay, but what did I learn from that? And how did it get me to where I am? That's mm-hmm. who I am. Like that's always been ingrained in me. But um, we told, we went out to, so this was in April. We went out to dinner with our real estate agents and we were like, we're looking for a short-term rental. We knew we wanted to invest in Indy because we knew it would be close. We're 30 minutes away mm-hmm. from the city. So we were like, it'll be close for us. That'll be good. So they were like, cool. Like, we'll show you houses. But I had also told them that we wanted to start our co-hosting company. And they were like, mm-hmm. we're really interested in hearing about that because there are so many people who need what you have mm-hmm. uh, or what you want to do with that. And so we we told them about what our vision was. And I was literally Caitlin in labor in the hospital. Like mm-hmm. my- broke on May 10th at five o'clock in the morning. And by about, I don't know, noonish that day, I get a text from our real estate agent connecting us to who would become our first client. And she was like, Hey Steph, like, I know you're in the hospital in labor, but I had to connect you to this client because she's got a house in Indy. It's being mismanaged currently. She really needs help. And I like in labor responding like, Yes, like I'm t- I totally am down for this. Like, let me get back to you in a few days and we can have a conversation and chat and go from there. So we basically onboarded her. I had that conversation with her like five days after giving birth, and like two weeks later, we onboarded her and also bought our short-term rental. Um, it was incredibly stressful knowing that I was I was like, what is happening? I was like, there has got to be a bigger purpose here. And that's why I just mm-hmm. kept saying, like, full faithful trust. Like this was my motto. <laughs> full faithful trust, I surrender, full faithful trust. Okay, what is it? Um, I, I knew that there was something bigger, so I just had to like keep going and keep working through that. But it was so weird to skip my payroll, buy a house, start a business, have a baby. And there were a lot of emotions. I distinctly remember Noah was probably like two to three weeks old. And I was like, I am so tired. And I just like cried myself to sleep during a nap. And I told Colin, I was like, I feel like I failed. I feel like I failed on so many levels. And this is just, it was just like hitting me. All the things were hitting me. Colin was like, you haven't, you haven't failed. Like this isn't failure. You're just like going through this like piece of entrepreneurship and that's part of it. And I'm like, yeah, shitty part of it, but it's a part of it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was wild. And there, there are definitely a lot of emotions around it. Even still for me, I look back on this first year of Noah's life and I'm like, wow, we pushed really hard in this first year. Um, and thankfully he is the sweetest, easiest, most chill, whatever baby. And I think it's because we're chill with him. Had this mm-hmm. been first, I think that all of this would have been a lot harder. But this mm-hmm. round, we were kind of like, okay, we we kind of know what we're doing. We, we've we got this. We're good. Um, and I sort of took the pressure off of myself to like try to be this perfect mom and to just mm-hmm. be this mom that I'm like, you know what? The kids have to fit into the lifestyle that we're building. And, and that's mm-hmm. all there is to it. I can't always adjust and adapt to like do what they have to do. And I'm, you know, with, with Eli, we were like, 
we have to be home from this time to this time for, for nap time. And with Noah, we're like, who cares? He's going to get the nap. He's going to go to bed. He's going to sleep. It's going to be fine. So mm-hmm. if anything, maybe made me a more chill mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I do sometimes wonder, will I look back on this first year of Noah's life and be like, man, I wish I didn't have as much stress as I did so that I could have like appreciated some of these baby moments. But, you know, along with having all the businesses and everything we're doing, we also have a toddler and mm-hmm. we have a toddler who loves his mom and he is extremely demanding of my time. So even if we didn't have the businesses and what we were doing there, like my time still would have been divided with Noah. It's just like different between the first and the second. Everything with the first is like them. And with the mm-hmm. second, it's like I'm trying to balance you plus everything else. So mm-hmm. yeah. It's cool. So like I'm giving you very long winded answers today, Kate. But I just you caught That's me okay. on the like I'm willing to talk about what's going on. <laughs> no, I love to hear it. And I think that it's you know, for me, I'm not a mom yet. That's not something that has happened in my life, but I I think about like what it's gonna change my life monumentally if and when that happens. And it's like, how have other people navigated this? You need to and I think other people in the audience need to to hear that too. And to know that it's also like, you have to give yourself grace. You can't do, you can't be everything at all times. So I think that it's just a, it's an impressive story to hear. And it's an inspiring story to hear. And I'm just wondering how, or if this is even something you're able to carve out time for, because you have a lot going on, but is it even possible right now for you to carve out time for yourself? Like, is there any step time? (laughs) Oh, I'll be honest, since like fall of 2022, there have really, there like hasn't been a lot. But um, when I got pregnant with Noah that fall, I was so sick, Caitlin, it was just, mm-hmm. it was, um, and I really fell off like the workout bandwagon. I've always been super active, you know, with workouts and, and all the things. Um, so this year, I've made a much more conscious effort to get back to moving my body, get back to working out. Um, I've created a lot more space in my calendar in terms of meetings. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit more protective on that. I also am like entering the short-term rental industry and thinking about coaching in that space and going, mm-hmm. okay, how can I structure this in a way that makes a lot of sense for how my life is mm-hmm. uh, and, and all the things. Um, so I, I find time to work out. I find time to meditate. Um, I find time to go on a walk to like, just do like small little things. I was with a friend recently who has two kids. She um, is their full-time caregiver, like full-time stay-at-home mom with them. And she's like, I've had to get really good about just appreciating the really small moments, like this warm cup of coffee or the sunshine. And I'm like, even just those moments, there's just like those small little things of gratitude can be really grounding and and super mm-hmm. powerful. So, you know, it's, I do, do I have time to myself? Yes. Do I also really enjoy the work that I'm doing? Yeah. Do I also know that I'm working for like something so much bigger right now? Yes. And my vision is like my guiding light. So I just, as long as I have time to be creative and like really think about my vision, that's what gets Mm -hmm. me. So, yeah. Well, I'm so excited to see the continued evolution of posted by the Webers and the Weber Co and like where everything's going to take you, where your family ends up. I know, I know there's going to be some adventures in your future. (laughs) Like it's going to happen. Um, so I have one more question that kind of goes back, like just, I guess, over overarching of everything, because you have been in this online space for such a long time. And I'm curious what kind of trends in terms of like the influencer space and like online business you kind of foresee happening or what things are like kind of percolating right now? Yeah, I feel like this varies industry by industry, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you were to ask me specifically about the short-term rental industry, I'm like, listen, I'm coming into this industry and I really want to teach short-term rental owners how to how to create an online brand and an online presence and what that looks for them, right? So many are not doing that. Or if they are, they've like gone to Canva and used a bunch of Canva graphics and it's not, it's not good. Um, I think in the world of the online space and influencers and business as a whole, we're seeing a really big push and a really big shift into just more raw, real, normal, everyday content. Just like, I hate to use the word average, but just like normal, like 
having the cup of coffee, a normal thing that you do every day. It doesn't have, you didn't go to Starbucks and order the da da da, whatever. I don't drink coffee, so I don't know. <laughs> I think we're seeing such a huge shift away from that. As someone who started my business as an influencer, I actually talked about this today on my Instagram. One of the reasons that I exited that space was because I felt like I was oftentimes pushing my audience to spend money. I'm like, spend money on this, buy this new thing, buy this new thing. And I think we're seeing a shift into, wait, like, where are we putting our dollars? What are we actually purchasing? And maybe this is just the time in my life that I'm in um, and the people that I'm following. But I think in general, in the online business space, we're seeing um, business owners be a lot more conscious about where they're putting their dollars. I think we're seeing Mm -hmm. business owners be more conscious about how they're cultivating their brands. The um, realness, the real stories behind that, how they're connecting to their audiences. We're seeing more and more of that. Um, I think that we're seeing less, I'm going to use the word bro marketing, but a little bit less of the like, join this free thing, buy this free thing, buy like the funnel, all the funnel building. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're we're selling in a different way. So it's just, it's, it's evolving. It's growing because people... From the years of 2020 to 2022, like the online space got filled quickly and a lot of people Mm -hmm. talked about. And I still hear regularly, I hate being sold to. And I'm like, you're being sold to all the time, whether you know it Mm -hmm. or not. But like, Mm -hmm. you may hate it and that's fine. That's your choice. Again, like, you can say what you want to about the world we live in, but like, we have to be able to afford things and like, like, it's part of life, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, But there's a way to sell in a way that connects to your audience and make sure that, again, you have their best interest at heart or you're creating a brand that you can really stand behind and feel good about, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So I think it comes back to like, what are your core values as a business owner? What's your bigger mission and vision? And what are you really trying to cultivate? And Mm -hmm. if you allow that to lead you, you will find a lot of success. I, one of our clients for our hosted by the Weber is also um, a lender and or mortgage broker. I can't remember which. I don't know. Maybe they're the same thing. This is you guys. So I'm in real estate now and I'm like, I don't know. It's not a sign. Um, but he posted and he was like, if you continue, if you continue to try to make your business about the money, you'll never have any of it. If you continue mm-hmm. to make your business about the people, you like the money will find its way to you. And mm-hmm. I was like, Yeah, like, that's so true. We have to shift. I I don't know about you, Caitlin, but I'm super over the content. It's like I made $50,000 last month and you can too. (laughs) Ah, like I'm so done with this content right now. Mm -hmm. It's, I think some people would say, well, maybe that's because you're not having 50K months. Yeah, I'm sure as hell not having 50K months, but I've been that entrepreneur. I have had 50K months. Mm -hmm. And I, again, like I just don't, it's not attainable for everybody. It's not realistic for everybody. Mm -hmm. What? How can we lead in a way that feels realistic? How can we lead ourselves in a way that feels realistic? Mm-hmm. And go with what you actually want. And if you mm-hmm. 50K months sound like a lot of work to you because they are and they come they can come with burnout and exhaustion and a large team and all the things, maybe that's not your goal. Your mm-hmm. goal can be like your goal can be simple living. Your goal can be spending more time with your kids. Your goal can be literally selling it. I just posted on Instagram. I would sell everything I own tomorrow and pack up in a camper and travel the States if that's what made sense for the time in our life where we're at. With Mm -hmm. an almost one-year-old, I would definitely not do that. But it's Mm -hmm. more about his age and also about the fact that we're trying to create this sort of sense of stability, right? There's Mm -hmm. never been more of a time in my life where I've craved stability. And Mm -hmm. I think so many people are feeling that in the online Mm -hmm. space as well and just in business building in general. So again, I think just like really check in with yourself about why you got started in business, where it is that you're trying to take things. Um, and if you see somebody post something that feels misaligned for you, I I have followed Jenna Kutcher for a long time. This is not by any means to just like hate on her or call her out. Um, one of my former clients, Jess, would say, you're just like calling it forward. You're just like <laughs> pointing it out, right? Bringing awareness to it. Um, Jenna has been, I think, selling her Pinterest course and she posted recently about the amount of money that Pinterest made her in the last month or something like that, or the amount of money her pot, it was, maybe it was her podcast. So she's selling her podcast course. And I was just like, this is such different content than what you've been posting. And this feel mm-hmm. that felt so misaligned for me. And again, mm-hmm. I think it's just because I'm tired of seeing that kind of content. It's like, mm-hmm. that's 
scale and I don't have like, six to 700 episodes or however many you have now, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. That was a very long ramble, but those are, those are my personal thoughts and opinions and I'll leave it there. <laughs> I think that's great advice. And I, I think you're right. I've started to see this shift away from like the curation of right. content. And I've even like, I've started being a little bit more sloppy and I've, seen better results from it which I think is it's really interesting there's a little bit less of that like oh how do I like emulate this other person that seems like they're really successful and just being in your authenticity and to your point I actually saw somebody's reel recently that was she just said nobody wants your free content nobody wants your free ebook like nobody wants to be funneled into your like free offer like either you have something of value that they want to purchase or you don't and it you know it's just a matter of them being your people or not Um, And I think that takes a little bit of the pressure off of having to, you know, build all these different like funnels for people to like launch through. It's like either they align with you or they don't and that's okay. So I think that's great advice. Yeah, I think we'll see, you know, we were talking earlier before we started recording. I think we'll see a big push for in-person again, like just, Mm -hmm. and I I think we started to see this. I think it will become more important in-person connections and in-person networks and just having real conversations with people, um, just kind of different than what we, what we have seen. And that's where so many, so many businesses are born. So many businesses grow are from those just like genuine connections. So all, all important things to keep in mind. I think at the end of the day, you have to decide how you want to run your business. And, mm-hmm. you know, I I was in a program for a long time that it was like, you've got to have the team. You get to a point, you got to have the team. you got to scale the team. Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. Definitely do need to have team when you get to a point where you're like, I'm at my max capacity and I literally can't go anymore without team members. Mm-hmm. Maybe hire before that time, but you don't have to have this huge team and they don't all have to be salary. Like you get mm-hmm. to decide like and and how you grow it yeah well I know one of like the huge pillars of what you do is collaboration I've been having a lot of conversations lately not even just about like these one-off collaborations but about long-term collaboration because it is it's difficult to do things completely by yourself there's something about having that partnership and also you know moving it's almost like we got slingshotted with everything being shut down we got really pulled into the online space and now everybody's like get me out of here you know, and take me back to the real world. So true. So true. I could not agree more. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Well, it's been so great talking to you, catching up with you, sharing your brand and your vision with my audience. Can you tell them all where they can find you, where they can connect with you, where they can listen because you have a podcast too? Yeah. 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 You can come hang out with us. Um, I would say come hang out on Instagram at the Weber Co or hosted by the Webers. You can come hang out either space. Um, and then you can also listen to our podcast hosted by the Webers. Colin makes guest appearances. <laughs> we're recording <laughs> our intro and we're like, we do this podcast together. And I'm like, hey, it's Steph and I'm back for another solo episode. But you know, it's probably how we roll. So yeah, come hang out. I love it. Well, I will make sure to link all of that in the show notes so people can connect with you. If you're in Indy, make sure to book a stay at one of uh, the Hosted by the Weber's listings. And thanks for being with us here. Uh, If you're not already subscribed to the show, make sure you hit follow or subscribe on YouTube. And I'll talk to you next week.